Would you like to see where some of your dollars go, John? Some of the people you hired to help build your car? They are the same people who possibly hired you in turn to help make their washing machines or their fountain pens or raise a hog for them to furnish their breakfast bacon. They are a cross-section of American industry. They are the face of America. Meet the people of the Oakland Machine Works of Royal Oak, Michigan. This is what you call small business. 30 or 40 people work here, machining castings for things like water pump pulleys. There's one of these pulleys in your new car. The dollars that come in the pay envelopes here circulate around Royal Oak and buy things from everywhere. Now here's another supplier, the Paris, Tennessee branch of the Holly Carburetor Company. There was practically no industry in Paris at all until this plant was built. Now 180 Paris people are making carburetors, and together they earn $30,000 a month. Some of it moves on through the cash register of the local grocery, the dry goods stores, the hardwares, and the dime stores of Paris. Paris, Tennessee. You'll find that a lot of these suppliers are small shops. Let's pick a few of them at random. The Lynette Bleaching and Dye Works of Lynette, Alabama. The people here work on headlinings for cars. The Modine Manufacturing Company of Whittier, California, where they turn out truck and passenger car radiators. Now, why does a company in Dearborn, Michigan, buy radiators away out in California? It makes good sense because Whittier is closer to West Coast assembly plants, and most companies like to buy materials and parts in the communities where they sell their products. For the same reason, wheels are bought from the Norris Stamping and Manufacturing Company of Los Angeles. made from blueprints and specifications, the standardized quality requirements. The battery picture will give you an idea. Four separate companies make batteries for Ford in 16 different cities, pretty well spread over the map, from Edgewater, New Jersey to San Francisco, California. They are close to assembly plants and close to all distribution centers so that a constant flow of fresh batteries can be supplied to dealers as service parts. So it goes, large companies, medium-sized firms, small shops all over the country, from great name industries with branches of their own to hometown industries, 6,000 strong, all functioning to keep parts and materials flowing to meet the months ahead schedule of the production program. In an endless stream of traffic, the thousands of parts arrive at their destination on time. One company is big enough to be self-sufficient. It is only big enough to be of service to everyone so long as the vital flow of parts and materials continues on schedule. When anything happens to stop the flow from any one of the 6,000 partners, it can disrupt the rhythm, the order of this great production cycle. And you might not be able to take delivery of your new car on the appointed day. And that's not all. When this system is disrupted over a period of time and they stop making cars, the partnership weakens and thousands of working men and women find their lives thrown out of adjustment. Many of the 6,000 partners have to curtail their operations and some even have to close their doors. The effect on American economy is felt in empty drawers of cash registers in corner groceries and dry goods stores all over the land. Many suppliers with simple, small-scale operations perform with the skill and knowledge of their people. They hold to close tolerances, the quality standard set up for each and every part that is to be incorporated into the automobile. Larger, more detailed operations maintain engineering and research laboratories of their own to pave the way for new improvement, 
to make their product and therefore the whole product better. There are thousands of examples of this, but look at just a few. Engineers in one of the supplier companies developed a new and better system of zigzag springs for seats. They brought it to Ford engineers, who gave it a tough time in the testing laboratory, touched it up with a few improvements, covered it with a cushion of sponge rubber. They pronounced it a better seat, a more comfortable ride, at no increase in price over the older coil-type springs. Another company developed a new, simpler, better-performing manifold heat control valve at no increased manufacturing cost. Automotive engineers can't think of everything, but 6,000 alert specialist partners can devise and develop improvements in their own fields simply because they concentrate on a few parts and don't have the function of a whole car to divert their attention. The car buyer's dollars spreading out over the country are paying for scientific research ingenuity and a constantly improved the Ford Purchasing Office, the company contact for 6,000 partners, is responsible for source and price of all items. The men in this office deal with suppliers directly. They form the connecting link between the dollars you paid for your new car and people all the way from spark plug ceramic workers to farmers who till the soil and grow things like cotton for car headlinings and upholstery. In the finest sense, this purchasing office is the connection between your car buying dollars and people like the grocer in Paris, Tennessee, and the shoe clerk in Whittier, California. Through this purchasing office, Ford becomes the worldwide distributor for products made by people in great manufacturing centers and obscure small towns, products that none of them might otherwise be producing. Through all the models of cars on dealers' floors, Ford becomes the distributor of 18 million yards of textiles. That is 3,400 miles of cloth every year, cloth produced by people from Maine to Alabama. It is the distributor for over 23 types of petroleum products, from fuel oil to aromatic solvents. Over 8,200 machine parts and stampings, from axles to washers. 30-odd kinds of accessories, from road lamps to body wax, and many more products, not only assembled into automobiles, but stacked as service parts on dealers' shelves. But the company doesn't just sit and wait for suppliers to deliver based on time, quantity, and destination requirements of production control. Buyers from Dearborn constantly visit the suppliers to see how they are getting along. If you are a supplier or one of the 6,000 partners, you are certain to run up against problems. You might, for instance, need help to speed the tooling up operation of a job. Tooling can run from thousands to millions of dollars. Ford buyer and Ford supplier working together can usually arrange for the tools to do the job. Working together, this buyer-supplier team can usually solve material shortage problems in critical times. To maintain quality standards, they often cooperate to train men in the techniques of quality control, 